Greetings fanboys and fangirls, Jared here with another video review from Fanboys Forever. Today we're going to be having a look at the brand new Masters of the Universe Masterverse New Eternia Skeletor. Now these figures are based much more on those original Mark Taylor drawings of the characters. For this particular subset, it's based on both the He-Man and Skeletor drawings that Mark Taylor did all those years ago. Now, the late great Mark Taylor was the illustrator who worked on Masters of the Universe for many years and helped design the original concepts for each of the main characters. Skeletor was, of course, one of those characters. He was originally envisioned more as kind of like this warrior, barbarian, demon-looking thing, almost like an evil Viking with a skull face and a beard. And this figure seeks to kind of capture that. Be sure to like and subscribe. That really helps the channel out. And be sure to comment down below and let me know what you think about this Skeletor. Let's go ahead and look at the packaging. You can see we have the brand new New Eternia logo right there, which looks really nice. There's a better look at the figure in the package. And you can see for better or worse, he is in the Masterverse packaging, which is a little bland for my taste. What's not bland is the cool art on the side. This is truly an incredible piece, and I wish I had this hanging up like in the form of a poster. Mattel's really missing out by not selling art prints of these things because this is beautiful. I just wish that this was more represented on the front of the packaging as well as the side. Speaking of that gorgeous artwork, you can actually see it on the back as well with a really cool bio that of course tips its hat to those original mini comics. And of course, the barcode and copyright info. All right, and here we have Skeletor right out of the packaging. So let's go ahead and take a look at the figure. Now, you'll notice right away that he looks quite a bit different than the last time you saw him in the packaging. And just like I did with my new Eternia He-Man review that had just come out, we're once again going to be starting by looking at his more classic look. Now, this figure does come with the parts to do two completely distinct looks, as you saw in the packaging earlier. That was him based on more of the Mark Taylor artwork. As we go throughout the review, I'll be dressing him in his concept art look, and you'll see how it works as we go. So let's go ahead and talk about the sculpt. Now, this, of course, is his more classic head that we have right here. And this is definitely one of the better Skeletor heads that we have seen in the 7-inch, 6-inch scale in quite a while. Uh, this is really, really nice. I am very, very happy with what they did here. This was executed just so well. I mean, everything from just the way that the eyes look to even things like the wash on the teeth there, it's all very well done. And the green at the top of the head blends really well into the yellow near the bottom. It's done well in production, it's done well in concept, and it just looks terrific. Uh, I love how the hood has that texture work on it that you can see right there. It's just a very impressive head. I really hope that we keep seeing this level of quality from Skeletor heads moving forward. You can also see that he's wearing his incredibly classic and unmistakable body armor piece right here with the little shoulder pads and the bones and the little pink emblem in the middle. On the back, you can see his harness, and later on, we'll show you what you can put in there. You can see he's got the cool belt buckle, and he's got his loincloth. Skeletor is not wearing pants. <laughs> he does have kind of like almost horde-looking boots, along with his monster feet. Much like He-Man before him, he does borrow quite a bit of his body sculpt from the original Skeletor released in the line, but there are quite a few changes, and we'll get into those later with the comparisons. I'm especially impressed by his large Havoc staff. I really like the sculpting on this. I thought it was just really nice with the uh, ram head and all those little intricate bits of sculpting that you see on the skull. As I had commented on He-Man before him, it does appear that the harness is sculpted to be a little bit higher up than the previous version that we saw for Masters Universe Revelation in Series 1, giving the figure more of a proportional look. It's almost like the sculptors are figuring out how to work with these new proportions that they've had and uh, are able to kind of bring out the bulkiness a little bit better without compromising it with the way that the harnesses fit. So I think that that is an improvement. This would be a great time to get into articulation. The head can just go up and down like this and around. You can see that we have that excellent torso movement that I talked about with He-Man, and it looks natural no matter which way you put it. You can see that we do have a hinge at the shoulder there, and you can put it well above 90, so that's good. Even though he has the little shoulder pads, since they're so flexible, you can put the arm straight up as if nothing is holding it back. He also has a bicep cut right there as well as a really effective double-jointed elbow. 
a hinged hand for all the alternate hands, and you can rotate it, of course. There is a waist cut, and down here, this is a lot more flexible, it feels, than He-Man's loincloth piece, so the kicks aren't quite as encumbered as He-Man's, so I do appreciate that. I think it's because there's a little more room right here, and of course, the splits are very possible. Just like I'd talked about with He-Man before, they have replaced this, and there used to be those weird kind of plasticky pieces that would uh, flex and bend and would warp, and now they actually just have regular dumbbell joints in there. There's also a cut right there at the upper thigh. There is a double jointed knee that works very well. There is a very loose boot cut right here. The other one's kind of similar, and these pieces just don't feel as stable as they were on He-Man and a lot of the other figures in the series. Down here, we do get hinges at the monster feet here, and we do get some rotation to help you hit those wider stances. But for whatever reason, it doesn't quite feel as accessible as He-Man's. Even though you can get those really wide stances like this, uh, because the boot cut is a little looser right here, it kind of ends up uh, destabilizing some of the things you try to do with the figure. At least on my sample, you may get one and none of that is a concern. So maybe it's, see what I mean? You could actually see the foot back there turn because this was too loose. So I think I know what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to use some heat, pop this apart, put a little bit of either glue or some of the uh, furnished stuff that a lot of us use to tighten up joints and put it back on. And it should be just as good as new but uh, definitely something I wanted to address because there may be a lot of them like that out there in production. All right, so let's go ahead and try one of the additional accessories. This is the extra chest armor that will turn Skeletor into more of a barbarian. And you can see that this just lays over the armor. Now there's some clip kind of looking things inside of it right here, meant to kind of wedge between the gaps and the shoulder piece right here and just set. Now, this isn't the most stable solution, I have to say, and notice that you can't do too much without it kind of wobbling off if you're doing some really extreme posing stuff. You can see that on the inside that there is the outline of the bone harness sculpted. So the idea is it's supposed to kind of just press up against it, but none of these connection points are particularly effective. Even when everything is perfectly lined up, it looks good, but if you jostle this around too much, it's going to come right off. If you put it upside down, it falls off because there's nothing really holding it on. And unlike He-Man's stuff, that was looped straight through the little straps on the vest, so it was extremely secure with the shoulder pads. This, you're just, it feels like I'm just setting it on here. You can see that he does have this cool black cape with this armor, and it even has some kind of damage and fraying that's supposed to be there that they've built into it. I really like it, uh, it's very nice, but at the same time, I would have really liked to have had just a purple cape that I could have attached to the harness. And this is black, so it gives it kind of, I guess, its own identity. At the same time, I feel like it would have looked better if it was just dark purple to pop on the head. Now, switching it out, we get this head, which is like a barbarian homage to the original Skeletor design. And this time, though, we have a really cool kind of barbarian helmet that they've added, uh, kind of inspired by some of the other early takes of Skeletor. And you end up with this really gnarly look almost like a skeleton warrior or something you would have seen in the Army of Darkness. You're also given this really cool sword, which I believe is based on some of that art as well. And I actually like this quite a bit. I like how there's some damage on the sword, as if it's pretty ancient. Remember in the original mini-comic, Skeletor came from a whole dimension of kind of beings just like him, and they were all skull-faced, so it was like an alternate reality or something. All right, and you can actually put the sword back there, and it looks really cool, just goes right through the harness. So I think that's a nice touch. The sword doesn't hold very well in his right hand. And unfortunately, he doesn't come with a normal grasping hand. So what you have to do is kind of cheat it and put the guard between his finger right here to make him hold it effectively. So that's just one way that you can do it. He still doesn't hold it very well, even like that. So it's a, a compromise you have to make if you want him to hold it with his right hand. His left hand is much more applicable to this sword because it has a good grip. And so as you can see, it looks a lot better and works a lot better just functionally. Before I forget, it is worth noting that he does come with a couple of alternative hands, but just like He-Man, he has the funny open hand. Then he has a fisted hand over here when he would have been much better off getting a better gripping hand because this one with the finger out 
doesn't really do what it needs to. So it kind of leaves you hanging on some of those accessories as most characters you would think would be using their right hand to hold those. Of course, one would think that that hand is more meant to hold the Havoc staff, but when you put the Havoc staff in there, this presents its own problems. Yes, it holds it very well, but here's the thing. The Havoc staff is heavy. <laughs> that was no interference from me. It just does that on its own. See, check this out. You put it up and then gravity does its thing. Um, that's because this is so heavy and so large, and this joint here in the wrist doesn't really have the kind of friction it needs to hold up the staff. And the other one hardly does either. So once again, something else that I'll probably need to apply the uh, furniture coating fix to or glue fix to so that I can get a little more friction on those joints. It's a shame that you've got these down here that are kind of the same way. I'm not really sure exactly what happened in production on this guy as the He-Man had no sort of loose joints whatsoever. And again, He-Man did not have as heavy an accessory as the Havoc staff. So I suppose in fairness, this is quite a bit more challenging for a figure like this to hold. We'll do some quick comparisons for this guy. The most obvious comparison is, of course, the Masters of the Universe Revelation version of this figure. And uh, it's funny because even though there's some of the main body parts being reused, there's so little that <laughs> makes them reminiscent of one another. Uh, they truly are very different. So it's funny to see them side by side like this. Yes, the chests, I think, are the same. And a lot of the arms and biceps are the same. The legs are the same. But then the boots are different. The feet are different. I believe he shares the same hands, of course. But one of the bigger differences is also with the way the arms are. Now, originally, you had these ridges on the Master vs. Revelation one. But over here, you have these kinds of fins coming up. So that's one big difference as well. It's also kind of disappointing to see that this guy's toenails or fingernails aren't painted versus that original cartoon figures having both. Here's, of course, the Masters of the Universe Classics Demo Man. Uh, these guys, in some ways, are based on some of the same artwork with the little beard and things. But it's very important to note that this guy isn't supposed to be a direct translation of that art. He's just kind of inspired by some of it. So this is full on supposed to be the art. This is just sort of partially inspired by it. So I thought it would be fun just to see them together alongside Skeletor. I think they look really good together. And here they both are in their classic forms side by side. These guys cost right around the $22 mark. It just depends on what price you find. So Skeletor has a whole lot going for him. He's definitely a great design, and especially in his classic look here, he looks terrific. So there's nothing really wrong visually so much, uh, except for maybe some paint missing on the fingernails and the toenails, but there is some things wrong functionally with the figure. Uh, of course, like I said earlier, there is some looseness when it comes to those shin guards at the bottom. There is a little bit of looseness when it comes to especially that right hands post and the wrist right there. Some of the new attorney accessories uh, like this vest here don't really have a very secure way of plugging into the figure and it's more of just kind of a laying over relying more on gravity than the friction of the actual mechanisms to keep it in place. With all that going against it, he is a little bit tougher sell than He-Man. However, all of these things may just be my sample. Uh, you very well could have these same issues with your He-Man, but not with Skeletor. I suppose it's all the luck of the draw. But what I will say is this is an incredibly competent looking Skeletor. And if you're like me and you've been having to fix joint tolerance issues for years and years, it's never really that big of a deal to heat them up, pull them apart, put a little coating on there and slap them back together. But you really shouldn't have to, of course. If it wasn't for the production problems, I would say this is easily the best Skeletor in the scale that we have gotten in many years since those classics interpretations. He's better articulated, of course, than those old ones that we used to get. And he looks just about as good, honestly. So color me very impressed with what they've been able to do here. I certainly hope we keep seeing releases of this caliber in Masterverse. Uh, you may very well start to see the channel focus more on Masterverse as time goes on if they keep this up. Well, friends, be sure to like and subscribe. That really helps the channel out. And be sure to comment down below and let me know what you think about this Skeletor. Do you think that it's the best one they've done in quite some time like I do? Or do you have some little nitpicks that you want to let me know about? Please let me know all about it in the comments below. And as always, God bless you and yours, and I'll see you on Fanboys Forever. Fanboy out.